Hello, new wave of British Heavy Metal.com here today. It's the 20th of December 2023. Quick request for a favour if I could ask that, and uh, that is if you would please subscribe to the channel, that'd be a big help, appreciated. So um, please do click that button if you would. Now, in a, a video from a couple of days ago, we looked at satanic rites from the old, you know, go, going all the way back to the New wave, original new, new wave of British heavy metal days because I um, mentioned that cult metal classics have uh, reissued both Satanic Rites albums from back then on limited edition CD runs and at that one we looked at their debut album um, Which Way the Wind Blows this is their second album from a couple of years later I think this was 1987 when, when this one was issued and No Use Crying and th this that would be it for, for satanic rites then after, after this album they kind of faded away and that that seemed to be that and uh you know th th there we are and as as usual you know cult metal classics do such a fine job of continuing to unearth so like lost or forgotten bands from from back then that didn't do much or didn't do anything at all really but still managed to find stuff to put out and it's you know excellent that they keep doing that and long long may they do so and here on no use crying we, we've got the album and some additional tracks a mixture of demos and, and unreleased stuff so again it's it's another top job and whereas which way the wind blows uh, is is nicely like heavy melodic and slightly proggy and, and you know refreshing and upbeat unfortunately certainly for me and this is just my opinion after listening to this a good few times, I can't say the same about No Use Crying. To me, it, it's a significant step downwards from that fine debut, and, and overall I found it quite quite limp, and not, not really having energy to it. To all, you know, there's no bite, there's not really anything to it at all. It's just nothing for me. There's much more use of keyboards than, than we're on the debut, and, and that sounds to me like it, it, it waters down the sound and makes it much more commercial. And so it, it, it doesn't really do anything for me at all, generally. Um, what, what about some of the songs? Well, the first three are quite a passable trio. Uh, Good Times Now, Never So Easy, and Borderline. They're not so bad, if, if a bit lightweight. Uh, it, it feels like they, they, they want to be heavier than they are, but they're not. But they say they're, they're, they're listenable, they're all right. Song for Stuart, that's a bit of a mess. It's, it's far too poppy. For me. Well, maybe that was the point. I, I don't know, but I can't get on with that. Pain of Confusion, mm, turgid piano-based ballad. It, it goes on far too long and goes nowhere at all. But there is quite a nice guitar solo in it, so we'll, 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 we'll give it something for that. Although it, again, it, it, it left me cold. Woman of Mystery is not bad, and that's not too far removed from the good stuff that was on the debut album. Uh, Here Comes the War, an, another slow ballad which goes nowhere, try, trying to be all brooding and atmospheric, but without really managing it at all. Uh, as for the, the other stuff, we've got four demos. Uh, we've got Just Call My Name and Run For Your Life, ne neither of which spoke much to me. And then we've got uh, early versions of Never So Easy and No Use Crying, which of course both would later versions would make the album. The best song for me by some way is, is one, one of the unreleased ones called Loser. Now I, I like this plenty. This is back to the style of the debut album. Fine, chunky, chugging rocker, some nice energy behind it. And it, it, it would have fitted it really nice on Which Way the Wind Blows. So, you know, they, they could still write stuff like that. But, say, so for, for me, that, oh, and then we've got Take Me to the Brig, and that, that, that's another another one that's way off target for, for me. Uh, having said all that, mu musically, it, it, there's, I don't think there's much to recommend it at all. But the, the main constant carrying over from that fine debut album is, is the vocal performance of Deborah Webster. What a phenomenal voice she had. So powerful, so rangy, so on it. And, you know, that, that was put to good use on the debut. She still stings up a storm on this one, but it's it's what goes behind it that, that's just missing in, in general for me. Um, and, uh, you know, well, well, there we are. 
And anyway, whilst No Use Crying is, is an album that's not to my taste, and I, I don't say that too often about good old Nawab and stuff, it, it might be for yours. Uh, if, if it does, if, if you think it might be for you, that's fine. But say, Which Way the Wind Blows is superb, and is far, to me anyway, far superior of, of the two. But th there we are. So it's just my opinion. You know, we, we, we all think differently, don't we? But, you know, and anyway, continuing thanks to Cult Metal Classics for more rediscovered new wave of British heavy metal era stuff that might otherwise have, uh, have slipped away. As usual with the label, this No Use Crying, as is Which Way the Wind Blows, are both out on limited edition runs of 500 CDs. As I record this 20th of December 2023, both albums are still showing availability on Sonic Age Records, where, where I got my copies from. So uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can uh, go to Sonic Age Records and, and snap them up if there are any left. You might find them both in other places as well, such as No Remorse. Uh, in the description links below, I'll also put a link to the, um, the, the the review that I did of which way the wind blows, so you can compare and contrast. So, so that that's Satanic Rites and No Use Crying. Didn't do it for me, might do it for you. Please subscribe to the channel before you go, that, that would be great. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and take care.